Hey, it's Amy Newmark, and I'm taking this week off so I can work on our fall books. I've picked out one of my favorite weeks from last summer to rerun for you, and I'll be back next Monday with new episodes. Changing your life one story at a time. This is the Chicken Soup for the Soul podcast with Editor-in-Chief Amy Newmark. Hey, it's Amy Newmark with your daily dose of Chicken Soup for the Soul inspiration. It's Motivational Monday. And today, I'm going to give you a sneak preview from our new book that I co-authored with Deborah Norville, Chicken Soup for the Soul, The Power of Gratitude. It goes on sale next week on August 23rd. The cool thing about gratitude is that you can learn how to use its power. You don't have to be born a grateful person. You can learn how to be one. And the more you practice it and are mindful about it, the more you will incorporate the power of gratitude into your life. The interesting thing is that scientific studies have proven that people who practice gratitude in their daily lives are happier, healthier, and more successful in their work and in their relationships. It's partly because grateful people are more fun. Everyone loves upbeat, optimistic people who see the good in what they have. And those people end up making more good things happen. So how do you incorporate gratitude into your life and become one of those well-liked, happy people? Well, here's one way from our book about gratitude. It's by Jennifer Reed, and it's called The Blessings Box. So Jennifer was being pretty negative. She was a new empty nester, and she said that her house felt so huge and empty. There was no talking, laughing, crying, stomping around, thumping music playing, or television blaring, because both of Jennifer's children had left for college at the same time, and they were too far away for her to have quick visits with them. Jennifer had devoted her life to raising her children, so now she was lonely and anxious. Even getting a part-time job didn't help. Now, she wasn't truly living in an empty house because her husband was there and he was trying to be around more, but she still felt like she was in mourning. She felt like she had no purpose, no reason to get out of bed in the morning, no motivation to do anything. Then Christmas came along, so she was excited. Her son, Eric, and her daughter, Emma, would both come home, and there was also going to be a surprise visit from Emma's boyfriend, Kyle, who drove hours from Vermont to join them. And Jennifer was having a wonderful time on Christmas Day, although because she had this negative frame of mind, a little bit of her was worrying even then about how she would do after the holidays when the house got empty again. Then Emma handed her a really smart gift. It was a wooden box that Kyle had made from old Vermont barn wood, and burned into the wood was the word blessings, and underneath that it said, Merry Christmas. Love, Emma and Kyle. Emma explained, it's a blessings box. You write down things you are thankful for, and you put them in the box, and then you can read them later when you're feeling down or sad and remind yourself of all the good things in your life. So that night, while the family was all there and the house seemed full of love and joy, Jennifer cleared a spot for the blessings box on her nightstand. And she wrote down the first blessing that she would put in the box. She wrote, Blessed to remember that no matter how far away my kids are, they will always be my kids. The next night, she wrote down another blessing. Thankful for my husband and all he does for me. And each night while the kids were there, Jennifer wrote down a different blessing. She wrote about her house, her job, her good health, her parents, everything that she was thankful for having, big and small. Then the kids left after the holidays, and the house became lonely again, and Jennifer forgot about the blessings box, until one night, when she was changing into her pajamas after work, she saw the box sitting under a pile of books. She opened it, she pulled out the blessings that she had written down over the holidays, and she read them to herself one by one, and with each note, she was reminded of all the good things in her life. So she started writing down her blessings each night, and she says that it helped her focus on the positive. When she needed a little boost, she only had to reach into that blessings box and pull out a couple of notes to read. It really transformed her. Jennifer says she has a new outlook on life now, 
and she has even learned to embrace the quiet times in her big old empty nester house. It's that simple, just spending a minute or even less than that, a few seconds a day, writing down one blessing in your life can change your outlook. You can write down one, you can write down three. Different things work for different people, but we see story after story about how writing down what's good in your life can really change your outlook in a positive way. I'm Amy Newmark. Thanks for listening to the Chicken Soup for the Soul podcast today. I am grateful and blessed to have this podcast so that I can share these wonderful stories that I love so much. Tomorrow, when you come back, I'm going to tell you another great story, this one about using gratitude to make even a broken down car into a wonderful opportunity. And if you'd like to read some tips for how to find gratitude in your own life, go to our website, chickensoup.com, and look up the book, Chicken Soup for the Soul, The Power of Gratitude.